Hello everybody and welcome to your next SFML tutorial. So uh, the, the last tutorial we ran into some problems with our input. When we were to press the enter key, uh, it, it would um, we got a result kind of like this. Or when we press the enter Z key, uh, let's run this. We got it would keep on transitioning back and forth. Sometimes when we let go, etc., etc. Now I've been changing some around the code. I don't know if there's anything that a uh, part of your code that's not here. I think I changed it back to what it was before, but uh, the only change is right here, and I'll explain it. Now, first of all, the environment I'm working in looks different. It's not Codebox anymore. I'm working in Visual Studio 2012. The code and everything's the same, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. Anyways, before we just had um, and ev um, SF event key released. We want to change that to and event dot type is equal to key released, or uh, else we're gonna get um, uh, behavior we don't want, and we want to change for this as well. Uh, so one one thing I just want to show you different ways to do certain things. Okay, so uh, we could do all of this and type all this code over here like we did before, right? Um, but there's always different ways to do something. Why not we just put key released? And just put in keys I over there. Since this already handles, um, if anything happens, then we we basically we basically reuse another method that we already have declared, right? So we could do the same thing for over here. If we wanted to, we could just say key pressed. Now, uh, we could say that and um, event dot type is equal to as of event uh, key pressed so if we put this here let's see what we get now so if we press a button it no longer transfers quickly it, it, it goes back and forth like we wanted to but let's say if we hold it down it keeps on transitioning back and forth which is what we don't want so there's a neat little thing that uh, comes with uh, with SFML and it's called we take our window and we say window dot enable key repeat and we say set that to false. So if we uh, run this program right now and we try to hold the key, it's not gonna transition. We have to like go and press it. So therefore, that's how we handle single uh, key input. Now, for if for whatever reason uh, that affects live input, for like when we do like when uh, dot get input, if it ever affects that, then what you could do, I it sh I doubt it should affect that, uh, but what you should do is that whenever you're using key pressed or whatever, then we c we can um, put in a Windows parameter in there, uh, a render window parameter. We could say window dot enable repeat, and then at the end of it, then we set it to false. Okay, so then if it ever affects live input, then we could do that as well, or we could just set it to true here, and then whenever we're taking live um, input, then we set it to false. It doesn't really matter which way you want to do it. So there's one last thing that we have to address, and that is uh, uh, th uh, this right here. So let me see. Okay, so if we go, um, let's go to titlescreen.cpp. Okay, so right now uh, we can um, check for single um, key presses, right? But say you want to check for live input for whatever reason. Uh, it also takes in a window object, but the title screen update and stuff only takes in an event, right? So what we need to do is we need to be able to take in uh, windows, um, the render window as well in case we want to do some live input right and uh, a lot of people might be saying uh, why not just make the window object global or something like that instead of having to do these parameters well uh, when we're doing object oriented programming we want to make uh, everything if we don't need to be global we don't make it global because you can run into complications later down the line and right now you might not see it but uh, it really can cause a, a, a lot of complications now we could in fact if you wanted to like it's not I don't really think it's advised but if you wanted to in the screen manager class you could create the render window in the screen manager class and then in main.cpp then when you call initialize 
uh, for the screen manager initialized and it would create the window and therefore the window object could be global since we only want to uh, have one in window object but if for whatever reason you want to have multiple windows or something like that then then you could run into problems so it all comes down to personal choice uh, it really doesn't matter which way you want to do it I don't think you will run to errors if you do it that one way or the other but uh, I'm going to do it the following way. It's a longer way, but uh, it has more benefits, in my opinion, in the long run. So uh, we have our just put it in there. Uh, we got to put it in our title screen dot h uh, and in our splash screen. So splash screen dot h and in our splash screen dot cpp. go down to update and we put it in there so that means in our screen manager class as well for our update we got to add that in reference to the uh, render window and um, screen manager CPP and uh, that and then we just have to add the window right there. So if we run this, uh, let's see if we run to any errors. Yeah, I think we will. In main, we got to go to main.cpp. And for the update, we got to add in our window. Uh, let's see what our errors we got. Oh, on our game screen. And did we change in game screen dot h? Yeah, we did. So let's try and run this. Okay, so everything runs smoothly like it's supposed to do it. So um, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye.